Desi Arnaz became renowned as the serious counterparts in the comedic duel that captivated audiences with the beloved 1950s TV show I Love Lucy. Not only was Arnaz an accomplished entertainer and vocalist, but he also displayed remarkable acumen as a savvy entrepreneur. While his singing and entertaining abilities played a crucial role in establishing I Love Lucy as a pioneering television sitcom, it was his business acuity that paved the way for the rise of the Arnaz family's prosperous empire. Born as Desiderio Alberto Arnaz y Diacha on March 2, 1917, in Santiago, Cuba, Desi came from an influential background. His father, Desiderio, was the mayor of Santiago and a wealthy landowner, while his mother, Dolores Arnaz, was the daughter of a prominent figure in the Bacardi Rum Company. However, their privileged life took an unexpected turn when the Cuban Revolution against President Gerardo Machado's corrupt regime altered their destiny. In the wake of the revolution, the Arnaz family faced turmoil. Their home in Santiago was looted and set ablaze, and Desi's father, a recently elected congressman, was imprisoned. Forced to leave their wealth behind, Desi's father made a courageous decision to flee to Miami, seeking a fresh start. He later sent for his son, and together they began anew in the land of opportunities. Upon arriving in Miami, Desi's father had already established an import-export company, which became the foundation of their new life. To get by, father and son lived humbly at the company's warehouse, surviving on simple fare like canned beans. In the bustling city of Miami, young Arnaz found himself in need of work during the trying times of the Great Depression. Fortunately, he landed a job cleaning canary cages for a canary dealer, earning a respectable $15 per week, a decent wage for a teenager at that time. However, fate had something more exciting in store for him. A thrilling opportunity came knocking when he was offered a position with a Latin dance band at the prestigious Roni Plaza Hotel, doubling his earnings to $39 weekly. This marked the first moment when he seriously contemplated a life in show business, leaving behind the world of politics and cage cleaning. His talent shone brightly, catching the attention of none other than Xavier Cugat, the reigning king of Latin music in the United States. Impressed by Arnaz's performance, Cugat offered him a spot in his band, though it meant accepting a reduced salary of $25 initially. The promise was that if Arnaz excelled, they would renegotiate the terms. As expected, Arnaz's popularity soared, and his exceptional skills earned him a raise to $35. As time went on, Arnaz started to dream bigger. He believed he had what it took to create his musical legacy. Brimming with confidence, he expressed his intentions to Kugat about forming his band. Instead of letting him go, Kugat made a unique proposition. He allowed Arnaz to use his name for the act, and thus, Desi Arnaz and his Xavier Kugat Orchestra was born. In return, Arnaz agreed to pay Kugat a weekly royalty of $25 for the privilege of using his renowned name. When questioned about the $25 royalty, Arnaz demonstrated his sharp business acumen by offering Kugat the very same deal that Kugat had initially given him. He cleverly stated that they would reconsider their arrangements if they achieved success together. In 1937, Arnaz proudly unveiled his newly formed band, but the opening night turned out to be a disaster due to the inclusion of two non-Latin musicians. However, Arnaz quickly adapted, introducing the conga, an instrument that was then unfamiliar to the United States, on the following night. His talent soon brought him into the spotlight, headlining the renowned New York nightclub La Conga. During this time, he caught the attention of the legendary duo Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart, who cast him in their Broadway musical Too Many Girls, portraying the role of a charismatic Latin exchange student. When the musical was adapted into a movie, Arnaz was invited to reprise his stage role. The film starred the fiery-haired actress Lucille Ball, their first meeting was far from glamorous, with both of them dressed in unflattering attire for their respective roles. Lucille Ball recalled thinking that Desi Arnaz wasn't so hot, 
and Arnaz had a similar impression of her with her bedraggled appearance and a fake black eye. However, these initial judgments quickly faded away as they got to know each other better. Their undeniable chemistry became apparent, and it was evident that Destiny had something special in store for the two of them. In one particular scene, where Arnaz's character was supposed to gaze at Belle's character and faint with ecstasy, there was no need for elaborate acting. Their connection was truly electric. He was the first to affectionately address her as Lucy. Their love blossomed quickly, and six months later, at the ages of 28 and 23, they eloped in Connecticut with a ring hastily purchased from Woolworths. Their new home was a charming five-acre ranch in Chatsworth, California, which they lovingly named Desilu. In the years that followed, the couple worked on various projects in film, theater, and radio, yet they had not attained the status of Hollywood royalty just yet. In 1943, World War II called upon the young band leader, and he dutifully served, though an injury kept him on non-combat duty near Chatsworth. Despite being known as a notorious ladies' man, he faced marital struggles due to his extramarital affairs, causing his wife to file for divorce in September 1944. However, they eventually reconciled, and the divorce process was left unfinished. The young man's talent earned him acclaim for his role in the film Batan, with some predicting he could be the next Rudolph Valentino. Yet, his thick accent posed a challenge for him to break into the film industry. Nevertheless, his 22-piece Arnaz Orchestra flourished, leading him to star in the film Cuban Pete, where he was billed as the Rumba Rhythm King. In 1948, the year Milton Berle made his television debut, one million American living rooms were adorned with television sets. However, within a year of Uncle Milty's appearances, his popularity had skyrocketed that number to an astounding four million. It was during this time that the talented duo of Arnaz and Ball established Desilu Productions to manage their various projects. A year later, they remarried in a beautiful official Catholic ceremony, and by 1950, they had both achieved success as radio stars. Arnaz took center stage as the band leader for Bob Hope's radio show, and later hosted the game show, Your Tropical Trip. Meanwhile, Ball charmed audiences as the quirky housewife in the hit radio comedy, My Favorite Husband. When CBS decided to bring My Favorite Husband to television, Ball insisted on casting Arnaz to portray her husband. This marked the beginning of a remarkable era, where for the first time they found themselves working and living together extensively. This unique opportunity allowed them to focus on their relationship and embrace the joys of parenthood. They breathed life into iconic characters, Lucy and Ricky Ricardo, a couple who captured the hearts of viewers worldwide through the magic of television. Fifty years after the show's debut, airing a single episode of I Love Lucy came at the staggering cost of $100,000. In the captivating world of entertainment, Desi Arnaz was always quick to credit his wife, Lucille Ball, for the incredible success of their show. He humbly stepped back and allowed her to shine as the star. When Lucy became pregnant with their real-life son, Desi Jr., the fictional Little Ricky made his debut on the show, drawing a staggering 44 million viewers, over 70% of the American television audience. Their lives, both on and off screen, were filled with joy during this period. The show received prestigious Emmy Awards for Best Situation Comedy in 1952 and 1953. As I Love Lucy's popularity soared, the couple established a thriving entertainment empire under the banner of Desilu Productions. Not only did they produce their show, but also delivered other television hits like Our Miss Brooks, the Untouchables, and The Danny Thomas Show. Together, they graced the silver screen in movies like The Long Long Trailer and Forever Darling. The visionary decision to rerun their show, catering to new TV owners who had missed the initial episodes, turned out to be a groundbreaking success and a significant boost to their fortunes. In 1957, Desilu acquired RKO Studios, 
the very first place where the couple's paths had first crossed. During its prime, Desalu amassed an impressive $15 million annually in revenue and employed 800 people. However, the journey to success came with its challenges. The demanding nature of their thriving empire strained their happy facade on the air. Arnaz devoted long hours to work and sought solace on his boat with various female companions, excluding his wife from those outings. He battled with health issues, worsened by his heavy drinking and a colon condition. At times, he became known for outbursts of anger. As the story goes, there was an incident where Ball pointed a gun at Arnaz's head, pulling the trigger, but only a tiny flame emerged from the barrel, with Arnaz casually using it to light his cigar. Their love story, after 20 years of marriage, took a different turn as America's beloved couple decided to part ways, and there was no fairy tale reconciliation to be found. Their iconic show, I Love Lucy, continued its successful run until 1959, but Ball and Arnaz chose to remain business partners even after their divorce. Both remarried, Arnaz to his neighbor, Edie Hirsch, and Ball continued her remarkable journey starring in The Lucy Show. Arnaz settled into a peaceful retirement on his 45-acre horse ranch in Corona, California, though occasionally taking on cameo roles. In 1962, he sold his rights to Ball, who then steered Desilu on her own, producing acclaimed shows like Star Trek and Mission Impossible. While Arnaz produced the television series The Mothers-in-Law, 1967, he found solace in his autobiography titled A Book, published in 1976. In these heartfelt pages, he expressed his deep love for Ball, acknowledging that I Love Lucy was more than just a title. It was an eternal sentiment that would endure. Even after their paths diverged, their bond remained strong. Ball made a poignant visit to Arnaz's bedside before he succumbed to lung cancer in 1986, departing from this world at the age of 69. Goodbye and rest in peace, legendary actor, band leader, and comedian Desi Arnaz. Arnaz.